All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. There we go. There we go. That's the longest hour and a half. Welcome, welcome. If you'll do me a favor, just take a moment, turn their cell phones off so that they don't impact the signal um, while we're trying to live stream and they don't ding, bling, and ring. Um, that would be fantastic. And um, I'm super, super excited to have you all come together today. We have an amazing service planned. Incredible mediums are going to be delivering messages from your loved ones in spirit. And if you'll do me a favor, so um, just for the purpose of the service and for the community, when if the uh, medium comes to you, if you'll just use the sound of your voice, yes, no, go beyond the head shape. Give it a good effort with the sound <laughs> of your voice, okay? Uh, just because it really does help. And for anyone watching at home, no one is on camera, so they won't know what's happening if we don't use our voice for that. Sound, sound fair enough? Yes. 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 But don't you love how I've just gotten to the point where it's just a look? <laughs> it's like I have a million kids because they can give you the look and you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so excited to have everybody. And uh, again, I can't wait to hear our talk of the day and you get the experience of our mediums. All of the mediums are professional mediums. This is what they do with their life, with their love and with their service. So it, it's going to be a fantastic morning. As always, uh, I'd like to start with a message from Spirit. So if you'll just take a minute and, and join me. Love. You ask for love, you look for love, and you even question love. When you feel disconnected, you choose to forgo love. We want to share with you that love is our eternal gift to you. It is not meant to hurt yet to show you how beautiful you are and the connection between us all. We have created the energy of love to be so strong that it can never be broken. Love may shift, it may move, but it will never subside. Your love is our love. Our love is always with you. Never hidden, never lost. It is not outside of you, it is within you. The magnificent light within you is the flame of love. We have given you the brightest light to carry you through the darkest time and to light the way for others. Your heart is the only piece that we have given you. For your soul has no limits, your capacity to love has no boundaries. The only limits are the ones that you have created. Love is what we ask for you to share. You are a beacon. You are meant to show your love through kindness, through your smile, through your gestures. For you are a messenger, a messenger of our love. When you love, we love. When we love, you love. In your acts of kindness and giving to one another, you are exemplifying all that we desire, all that we created, pure love. We are always surrounding you with the greatest love that you can possibly imagine. When you doubt, when you question, know that we understand. But we also encourage you that in your darkest moments is when you may find the inner strength to love greater than you ever have before, to shine the brightest. For love is the most powerful healing tool that we have given you to share. When you fear, let go. Trust us. Surrender to us. Give your love freely with open arms, for that is where your light shines. Your light is desperately needed in the world. 
And through the power of love, you are reminded of the oneness of all. With Valentine's Day around the corner, right? It's all about love. You know, and there's that romantic love, that connected love, and then I I guess society feels really bad for the single people, so now there's Single Awareness Day. <laughs> and then that made us feel really bad too, so now it's like, oh, be with your bestie day. <laughs> um, but it is a wonderful way, you know, it is a beautiful day that we get to share and shine love with one another, where it's openly okay to express it. Right? It's openly okay to say I love you or to give someone a hug or to say I'm there for you. Um, but this is a day that we can share every day of our lives. It doesn't have to be one day of the week that we tell someone how we feel about them or that we let someone know that they matter or that we shine with them and say you've made a difference in my life. But when we are in love and feel love, doesn't the world just feel yeah. right? Doesn't it feel amazing and magnificent and ever flowing? Yes? Yes. 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 And when our heart is broken, isn't it like, ah, oh, I'm never doing that ever again, ever, right? But the thing is, is through these experiences, I really feel that love and spirit is here to say, you know what? You can do it. Your heart can mend. You can do this again. Get back out there. Love someone else. Shine again. Love a neighbor. Love a friend. When someone seems like they may not deserve it, love them anyway. Love them through the complications, the disappointments, because it is that capacity to love that we get stronger and we see the brightness and we see the goodness in the world. And it's easy, it would be so easy to turn on the news or to turn on the social media, no offense to anyone at home, we love you. <laughs> but to see all the negative stuff and then to give up hope and to say, where is the love? But the love is within you, the love is right here. And when we focus on that and when we focus on what we can do as beings, as people, as a community, as a one source, we can absolutely change the energy from anyone feeling hate to love. It magnifies, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. You know, it radiates. And so each day we're given an opportunity. Each day that you have the glorious gift of waking up to be in the physical world, you have an opportunity, an opportunity to make someone else's day a little brighter. Give them hope, give them a feeling of that you care about them. Just the validation. It could be something so simple and so easy and yet it can completely shift their life and their perception and make them feel needed and wanted. And that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the thing is, it's a mystery. What brings it together? Why is this feeling so powerful? And it is from source. It is from spirit. It is where we come from and it's where we return. And I think sometimes they give us these little challenges in this physical world saying, uh-huh, let's see what you got in you. <laughs> but day in and day out, we see beautiful miracles beautiful miracles from average, everyday people going out of their way to make a difference. And so as this week approaches, as our love week approaches, um, I ask that you find a way to have that love in community. Have that way to share love as much as you can. Share the positivity. Change the energy. Go on a date. Ask someone on a date, love your mate, love a friend, love someone you've never met before. Just give them some love. Because we all could use healing, every single one of us. There's always a little spot where we could just use that little 
someone's got my back. Okay? And so when we realize that we can make a difference just through the simple act of opening your heart to sharing it with someone else, whether it's a smile or a look, or you buy their coffee, or you help them with their groceries, whatever little act it may be, just showing up for someone else can absolutely have a much greater impact on the energy of the entire world, believe it or not, those little acts. So I just wanted to share that with our week of love. <laughs> yes, let's love greater and brighter and stronger more than we ever have before. Because it is, it is needed more now than ever, and we can do it. You can do it at home, so make sure you love someone. <laughs> All right. We have our talk today. And uh, what's amazing is Kelly is a master teacher. She is a Reiki master. And she teaches classes. She does this professionally. And she's going to give us a talk about how energy can create healing and the impact and how our intuition can also impact the healing. Sound good? Yes. Sure. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. So a warm welcome for Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. How's everyone today? Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. So I'm guessing I'm looking right here. Hello. <laughs> Online, Facebook, extraordinaire. Um, so today my talk is about energy healing. I'm going to go into talking about Reiki. Um, and then I'll just go naturally into how Reiki just helps um, to alleviate, restore, replenish, and all those lovely healing qualities um, and benefits within just the modality of that. Um, so starting with energy healing, specifically Reiki. Um, Reiki is known as an energy healing modality that comes from Japan. A lot of you, a lot of you know about it, but um, maybe you don't know about the details. So I'm going to go right into the definition of Reiki. Um, Reiki is Japanese characters of Rei and Ki, and they come together to mean something unique in itself, just like Rei and Ki comes together with what it is to create the energy unique quality of Reiki. Ray is the definition of the unconscious spirit. Um, it's the immaterial. It's um, universal. It comes from a very benevolent, pure place. Um, and key is vital life force energy. It comes from a more physical based energy. When you put together, when you put the two together, you bridge heaven and earth. And when you bridge heaven and earth, you funnel in the quality of Reiki. Reiki itself comes from Japan at a very ancient origin. The exact date is not known. Uh, it predates the 1700s and 1600s, but the most common form of Reiki is um, Usui Reiki. And that started in 1922. It started from a man called Usui, Mikao Usui. And Mikado Osumi um, developed this style from the very ancient art. Mikado Osumi came from a background of a wealthy family. He actually um, had relatives that were sam samurais for the royal family. So all his life, he had money and he had access to knowledge. And he was very passionate about metaphysics, mysticism, spirituality, religion. He actually made his career as a businessman, so he did this on the side. He went to schools throughout his life, um, and he had this passion on the side. When he was 58 years old, he um, decided to leave business and devote himself full time to family and spirituality. So, having a teacher during this time, um, he had a conversation and he's his greatest need and greatest want was to find spiritual enlightenment. After all this time and having such a passion for the journey, he had never obtained a clarity, an aha, 
um, a feeling that he so desperately wanted. Um, so his teacher told him to go to a mountain and to meditate and fast. And his teacher said, you will go to this mountain and you will find your enlightenment, your clarity, and you will either find it on the mountain and return to me, or you will stay on the mountain and you will die on the mountain. So that was his spiritual ultimatum. So he goes to the mountain on Kirama, that's in Kaila to Japan, and he's on the mountain for 21 days. Every day he sits and he fasts and he's in silence with himself. And on the 21st day, he has the revelation. On the 21st day, he has the spiritual download. And it's just the accumulation of everything he's learned in his life and the benevolent, nurturing energy of Reiki comes to him and his aha, his knowing. So, just with the waha, the aha that he receives, he comes down from the mountain, he talks to his teacher and he goes, I know what to do. Like, I know how I want to live my life. And from that time, 1922 to 1926, only four years in that time, he goes out to the public and he teaches over 2,000 students Reiki. And in 1926, I talk about this date, is also the year he passed away. So in four short years, after searching the majority of his life, he finds his purpose, and he just goes out there and gets it done, and it all happens within that time. Within those four years, he builds a school, he builds a clinic, and he makes Reiki very, very accessible to the public. And he simplifies Reiki. Reiki, I said, comes from a very ancient origin, but he made Reiki as simple as funneling in the energy, using symbols, using intention, and generating a very loving, healing force. Reiki, as it was known, was largely in mystery schools or documents um, accessible to people only devoting their life to spirituality, like monks or priests, if you can imagine or um, people of wealth that had access to this knowledge. So he completely changed basically how Reiki was perceived. And through just the multitude, like I said, over 2,000 people within four years, it spread and spread and spread. By 1970, it came to the United States um, from Kuatsukatsa. Her teacher was taught by Usumi himself. And so we start in Hawaii and go to California, where we're here today. And Reiki in 2018 is very, very, very much known. And it just continues to spread and sprinkle. And I'm sure you've all heard of Reiki. Yeah, yeah, I'm just like, but not as excellent. And Reiki itself is known for, and I'm going to go into the benefits, uh, deeper relaxation. It's known for um, restoring positivity, like lightness. Um, a healthier perspective on life, it uplifts people when they feel that energy. Um, it brings mental clarity, it brings awareness, it brings boosted energy levels. And these are all just like the most basic, basic qualities that you receive within a Reiki session. That um, lightness can actually extend into physical lightness, emotional lightness, physical alleviation, mental alleviation. Um, it's very, very remarkable. As a Reiki practitioner, um, I'm sure you've come across um, people saying about the benefits, but also saying, you know, I'm not a doctor at the end of the day. And I, I'm not a doctor at the end of the day, but within Reiki, there are cases just from experiences and word of mouth, just personal accounts of depression being lifted, of people not needing surgery because their shoulder pain and tension or issues with spine have been corrected. It actually can go that far with how you can restore one's body or restore one's mental state with this healing energy. It's fantastically beautiful in that. So I guess what I want to describe with Enrique are there many different styles of sessions. There's a spiritual based session, there's a mental based session, there's an emotional based session, and there's the more physical based sessions. 
every Reiki practitioner kind of has special specialities in different categories, and sometimes they mix their specialities. Like in a spiritual Reiki session, you're more working with um, having um, an individual have been having an individual to encourage an awakening. So you're working with the crown chakra energy. You're working to um, flood their channel with positive energy, loving energy, and it just opens up the rest of their channels and it expands their aura and they can have very enlightened states. That's one example of a spiritual um, based Reiki session. Then there's like more mental based Reiki sessions and that's for mental clarity, like peace, contentment, um, feeling like sharper, feeling more lighter, um, having that just clear mental space. And that's more working with um, the mind's eye region um, to just alleviate any just tension or um, conflicts within like busy thoughts or sometimes it leads to sleeping. A lot of times when we can't sleep, we have um, conflict and um, mixtures of energies within our um, mental space. And so that helps alleviate that and calm the mind and encourages sleep. Um, there are more mental, excuse me, there's more emotional based sessions and emotional based sessions usually work with like, the heart chakra and that encourages being more comfortable in one's body. That encourages um, one to feel more, one to associate and to be present in experiences. A lot of times when people have dealt with emotional trauma or have emotional issues, they're checked out, they're out of their body, um, they're not completely um, so there's little, little things that you can do to help encourage, um, the body to receive more energy in those healing centers. Um, then there's physical based sessions. Um, sometimes that's the most common one you hear about and that's working with like muscle tension or that's working with like specific, um, conditions, um, helping to generate vitality, extra energy, um, Working with just whatever your client says, hey, I'm having um, discomfort in this place. I'm wondering if um, Reiki can help. With every single one of these categories, there isn't a specific outcome. There isn't um, something guaranteed, but there always is an alleviation of lightness. There always is love given to that area. And the more like practice and the more experience and the more like dedication or specific um, someone is within the Reiki style, the more you can have results. So I really encourage you to find people that express specialities within their certain Reiki styles. And that's the ticket. And uh, like finding a Reiki master, um, I think is really important to talk about too. When somebody is a Reiki master, um, it's not something actually special for them, themselves. The specialness um, is how the Reiki master commits to the self-mastery of their continual practice of Reiki, their continual devotion to Reiki. When someone becomes a Reiki master, it's just, a promise to themselves that they will continue to master who they are with that energy. They'll continue to master um, anything they wish to improve in with their experience. Um, and so it's about honoring the practice, but it's also about um, knowing what's needed and following through. And the best Reiki masters are ones that are constantly developing um, and are willing to share their specialities and ones that you know from multiple sources um, have given people very, very good lasting results. So I definitely encourage you to like look around, hear feedback, and just gain multiple sources of information. So like Reiki and itself, the, the act of Reiki, the practitioner, imagines a universal collective energy. 
an energy that's greater than one's individual self, an intelligent collective to funnel into the top of their head. And so that's the crown region and a little bit above the crown. It channels into the practitioner's body. It goes through their main channels, their meridian points, their chakras. So I'm just going to go over the main ones. So it goes into the mind's eye, the throat, the heart. It actually comes all the way down into the solar plexus to stabilize. And then it generates back upwards. And this is where the chi is generated. And this is where you get the mixing of the heaven and earth energy. It comes down and it bridges with the practitioner's chi. It mixes, sends back up, and then it comes out from the practitioner's heart and hands. And that's then the bridging of the heaven and earth to another person. And then you become the bridge to the physical person. You're filled with the Reiki energy, your body fills up a little bit more spiritual based energy in your hands and your heart of the bridgeway to the person's physical body. And then there, the energy starts to change and build up with that more spiritual based Reiki energy. And so the Reiki energy, like I said, has this intelligent collective um, that is greater than anything I can ever think of. Even through all my experience, I'll have some ideas that I want to maybe try, or I'll have some insights that I know I want to execute for the individual, but I will always be the most passive I can be with every session because the energy guides me. All of a sudden, I get like little hits, or I just completely let go and I don't think of anything, and the energy just comes through and it goes where it needs to go to the client. I will be working on someone's head. It will start at somebody's head and it will go down to their feet. It will release up the feet. It goes in every different direction you can imagine. And the only places you know it truly goes are when you talk to the client yourself. Like you will know where the energy goes, but you're not completely in control of the process. You're a passive vessel that just fills up with the Reiki energy. And it's a matter of practice and letting go and more and more and more and just coming becoming committed and becoming just a vessel for spirit. It's very much similar to being a reader in a sense. You know, most of you have experiences with psychic mediumship. So at the end of the day, um, like Reiki is about opening up your energy and accepting heaven. Um, on earth and I think the inspiring thing is just to open up yourself to letting love into your life so you can bridge both heaven and earth and you can start to create maximum benefit for yourself and people around you and there is one way to do that so I hope you all have a great day and thank you so much for letting me talk Did you guys like that talk? Yeah, that was really good. We're all going to listen. So uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to start the, the messages. Are you guys ready for messages from Spirit? Okay. I do want to thank Kelly so much for the talk and for sharing Reiki and helping us understand it a little bit better. Um, because a lot of times, especially some of you at home, you may hear it. And, you know, no one ever really takes the time to say, hey, this is how it started, or this is what happens. They just go, ah, it's Reiki. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> so so that, that's really, I, I appreciate that so much. Um, and then some of you may have gotten tickets online, so if you did, you don't. But it's just that if anyone cares to or wants to support the service, thank you so much. And... Now we've got our mediums. So we've got our messages from Spirit. So I'm super, super excited. They never know who's going to come up first. I, it's, it's a little roulette that we play here to keep the ball rolling. But our first medium is, you know, remarkable because... Again, we're all faced with challenges and we're all faced with things that come up that maybe we're not expecting or, um, you know, adversity in some way or that way to shine. And this medium, 
I just feel and I'm so grateful that she is here today because it truly shows her commitment to spirit and that commitment to serve. And I consider her a friend, an amazing medium, a beautiful light. Her energy, her passion and compassion come across so clearly. And she used to be a uh, school teacher. So, you know, she's got that she's got that school teacher vibe about her. You know those people, right? <laughs> So it's so nurturing and loving, and anyhow, I could go on and on, but she has her own show. She uh, does this professionally, and we are very, very honored to have her here at the service today. Susan Schuller, thank you very Very sharp brain. 
And even as I'm talking about she was sick towards the end, I still feel like my mental, I, I'm mentally still sharp. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I feel like I am a good multitasker. Do you understand this? Yeah. You sure? But you don't say yes if you're. Yeah, I mean. Okay. But, but her death wasn't, it, was, it wasn't over a period of time, so that would be the other. Okay, let me try to figure this out. I don't feel like it's an event. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I do feel like I'm ill. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, and I do feel like I'm on lots of medications. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because all of those things kind of play into it. Also, I, I do, I'm mean, going back to the way that she carries herself because my braces just kind of jangle a little bit. I do feel like I'm almost very willowy when I speak. I feel like I might speak with my hands. I feel like I might wear bangles. Do you understand this with her? Yeah. Okay, you sure? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it just feels like, um, she specifically drew my attention to the bracelets right now. Mm -hmm. Did she need, okay, I'm not gonna ask. Um, I feel like you would have a memory of certain bracelets that she wore. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. We don't, okay. I just can't get away from that. If, you know what she reminds me of? You know how, if you watch the old Grace, I'm not Grace Kelly, um, but Ginger Rogers, the old movies where she was real willowy. Do you know what I'm talking about, Ginger oh, Rogers? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. She just reminds me of that. Sorry, I'm dating myself. <laughs> um, she reminds me of that, okay. But I do feel like the two of you would have had conversations, good conversations, meaningful conversations. Do you understand this? Yeah. Okay, because I feel like this woman was the type of woman who, she was an excellent counsel for other women. Do you understand this? Like, I feel like I would have had, um, I would have had wise words to give other women mm -hmm. about how to deal with empowering themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because like I said, I feel like I'm a strong lady. Yeah. Um, and I can't get away from the erect posture, okay? Um, now, I do feel that, um, okay. She's also showing me a lighter side. Do you understand this? The yeah. funnier side? Yeah. Okay, and I feel like that funnier side was important. I feel like this is a lady who can laugh at herself. Yes. Okay, yeah. And I feel like she often did. She enjoyed laughing at herself. Um, she almost feels philosophical. Like, life is just, there's there's too much stuff going on to take yourself seriously, to take life seriously. It's like, just kind of, and she's got a bit of gusto about this. As much as she feels like this proper carriage to me, I still feel like she's a bit of lust for life. Do you understand yeah. that? Okay. Um, I also feel like she's talking about when she was younger, and I do feel like she thought she was a good looking woman. Do you understand this? It's, do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like um, she knew men looked at her. Do you understand that? Because I yeah. feel like she can work it a little bit. Right. Okay? Yeah. Um, yes. She's kind of got that going on. And um, I do feel like she dressed very well. She feels very well put together, especially when she was a younger woman. Do you understand this? So I don't know if you have pictures. Okay. You might want to go back and look at some pictures because she just feels like the way that it's showing to me is that the, the lips and the tips match. You know what I mean? It's like, have you ever seen people that are really well where their lips simple match their yeah. mouth? Yeah, fine. But you know what I'm saying? Like, day -day right. But, but I just feel like, okay, yeah. Um, I do feel, though, she wants to talk a little bit about you, if I can go there, if that's okay. Because I feel like what she's talking about is when she was saying she wasn't fancy, okay? Mm -hmm. But I feel like she was well put together, and I feel like she was then talking about your looks, okay? And I feel like what she's saying is that you have this beauty about you. All right, and I feel like what she's saying is it's like, you know how she carried herself? You have this inner confidence. And I feel like what she's saying is she always respected that about you. Did, she, did, you, did you ever have that conversation? Are you aware of that? Um, I can't. Oh, sort of, but not specific. Okay, because I do. I just feel like what she's saying is she always respected that about you. It was like you didn't need to be center stage. You didn't need to put yourself out there, but you knew what you were about. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is what she's telling each and every one of us is how important it is to know what we're about. I think you feel like she knew that. Do you understand yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, lovely lady, yeah. very, very lovely. So thank you for being here. I have a dad with me, and I really want to smile with this job. I just feel like I have big cheeks, and I just feel like I'm very outgoing, I'm gregarious. I mean, look at the way I'm talking right now. I just feel like I'm, and I also feel like I'm a physically demonstrative man. I feel like when you're around this gentleman, I feel like he would give you one of those hugs and it would be an all-encompassing type hug. And if you notice where my body is going, I'm drawn to this side of the room. So does anyone over here understand a father, or it could even be your father's father, that had that kind of big energy? Does anybody understand that now? 
Okay, possibly. I feel, I'd say I'm standing over here, so I just have to figure this out. So because that's the way my stomach's going, uh, let me just see if I can get a few more things. I am drawn to a heart condition with this gentleman. So I do feel that there may have been, I'm not sure if that's what took him, but I do feel I would have been on medications. I feel there's a heart issue. Does anybody understand this over here? Okay, so, okay, so, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Um, but the heart condition? Yeah. Okay. Well, it wasn't, like you said, it, it, he passed, but from that, but it wasn't. Okay, there was, okay, because it just feels like a pressure. And it's interesting because with, and this is your dad. Yeah, okay, because I can't get away from the big energy. I just feel very jovial. I feel like salt to the earth. Do you understand this? I just feel like um, this is a man. First of all, I feel like this is great. I love when I see old, old gentlemen like this. I feel like this is a gentleman who was raised where if he was sitting and women got on a bus or something, this gentleman would have stood up and said, please take my seat. Do you understand yeah. this? Okay, there's just this really... Um, like a deep respect for older people, a uh, great respect for women. You know what I'm saying? Do you yeah. understand that? Okay. Um, but I feel as though with your dad, he's showing me how he would have done anything for other people. And I feel like, okay, sometimes when you're in the in family like you were, that the outside world, he kind of had a different visual for the outside world and the inside of the family. Do you understand this? Definitely. Okay. Because I feel like he's showing me the outside world. Like, I had done this, I had done that. And then I feel like if you were the immediate family as you were, there, there may have been a side to that that you, he wasn't always like that. Do you understand? I'm not going to say his shadow side or his dark side, but I do feel that um, when he was out, he was on. And when he was home, he didn't really need, feel the need to be on. Yeah. So he let his guard down a little bit. And I feel like sometimes I'm dealing with a very different man. I feel like sometimes I just kind of want to be alone. I just, I just want to decompress. You know, so I do feel like I have a job that I have to be on. Do you understand this? Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's also with him, it's interesting because I really feel like I'm seeing like two different people here almost because He's, he's a little depressed. Do you understand this? As much as he showed me like this big side, I feel like there was um, a little sadness. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. And it feels more the private aspect of him was that. Now, I feel like when he shows you and your relationship with your dad, though, I go back to the big grin. So I do feel like you had the ability that when he would be feeling rather sad, you had the ability to pull him out of that. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, because I do. I feel like he's, he was very, very thankful that you were like that. Do you have a sister as well? No. Okay, he's showing me another female, though, too. Do you, would you understand another female in the house that would kind of help pull him out of that? Yes. Okay, yeah, because it, it's just like they saved him. That's the way he kind of listens to me. It's like they saved me. Um, okay, and I feel like his personal message is to you. Oh, boy, okay. Okay, like what Colby was saying before about being the light. Okay, you are this light for other people, and I feel like what he's just saying is you're really, really good with yourself sometimes. Do you understand that? I'm drawn to your third chakra as I'm saying this, and I feel like what he's saying, okay, he knows you shine. He knows you put yourself out there, and he loves that, but he just wants you to be kinder to yourself. Would you understand that? Um. I just, I just, I just, okay, I just, I, no, 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 I just feel like he's asking you to be kinder to yourself. Um, and he's showing me, and I, this kind of ties in, I feel like what he's showing me is when you were a little girl and you had that kind of reckless abandonment, he's like, go back to that reckless abandonment. That's you. That, that, that's what really makes you just light up. Okay, and I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be kinder to myself. <laughs> I did. I'm, I'm, I'll just share real quick because, you know, there was this dress and I really <laughs> dress. I had stopped it for like six months <laughs> and I said, it just goes on clearance. And it did. I said, it's a sign. So I can't wait to wear it even though the season is out. I'll have to wait till next season. Anyhow, are you guys enjoying? Yes. So we have a, another medium in the house. We have lots of more messages to uh, give from Spirit today. Our next medium, which is great, is he worked in recruiting and then Spirit decided to recruit him. So he is now... 
changing his life path and purpose to helping others with their own path and with their own purpose and also making those connections. So, and he's actually going to be doing an event here, which I'll, I'll mention a little later, but I want to welcome uh, my lovely friend and medium, Zach Lowe. <laughs> Thank you so much, Colby. Thanks everyone for being here. Thanks everyone for watching. And I am Zach, and I will get going. <laughs> get going as in tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a gentleman here with me, and he's showing himself to me as, um, he's showing himself to me in his younger years. Let's get a little bit more here. Um, he is, I feel like he would have been a friend for you, and he's very much like a overachiever, did well in school, and I also feel like someone you can just trust, someone that you can go to your problem, tell him your problems, and he would be there for you. Can anyone connect us, friend and spirit, who would, you would have that kind of relationship with? And I feel like you've gone to this side of the room. Um, yes. <laughs> that makes sense for you. All right. And I do feel like it would have been a sudden passing with him. Would that also make sense? Yes. Okay. Let's see here. And I'm getting something involving water with this passing. Would water make sense? No. Okay. But was, was there a connection with water with him? Um. Has it lived by the water? Uh, no. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll table that for now. Okay. It could be two people. Could so, be two people? Yeah. Okay. All right. Is it connecting with anyone else? Okay. And then with, with, my, with this friend of yours, I feel like you would have known him at a time when you were going through some things. And he was like the one that you could always go to, and he would just be there, he would understand, and wouldn't judge. You would just talk to him, and he would just listen. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And. And I feel like that was, you appreciated that in him, and it was rare, especially at this time, this age, it, have that ability to just not judge, not give advice. It's just something that was really unique. And, something, and you just recognized in him that he was probably going to do something very special, important things. Uh -huh. Do you feel like you know which friend we're talking yes. about now? Okay, yes. good. And this, this would have been a friend of yours from childhood, is that right? Not childhood, but early. Early adult life, yes, okay, great. Right. And I'm seeing something involving balloons. So I feel like there was, um, like the two of you, maybe you had birthdays around the same time. Would that make sense? No. But there might have been something with balloons, but no birthdays. Not birthdays, but, but balloons make sense to you. Okay. okay. Right. And I feel like he also, I feel like this is someone who would have had a lot of friends. It would have been very well liked. He just would have been loved by the community. Yes. And I feel like his passing would have affected a number of people because I feel like you had this close relationship with him and just a lot of people did. Yes. Because he had this unique ability to make everyone feel like he was very special or they were very special to him. Yes. And <laughs> what I feel like he wants to tell you is that you have this as well. And that you often don't give yourself credit for having this special ability to make people feel that they're loved, make people feel that they're they're heard, that they're valued, and to recognize that in yourself. Thank you. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Okay, I have a woman here, and she is. Um, See, I feel like she would have been a family member of yours, and she is showing herself to me as, I want to say she's an aunt, or an, I'm going to go with aunt for now, and I'm feeling also drawn to this side of the room, and I, I, I feel like there is, it's an aunt type relationship, but at the same time, I, it feels like there's a friendship there as well, and I'm, I'm actually feeling you right here. Can you connect to an an aunt and spirit that you would have had like a close relationship with? No. 
Does anyone over here connect to what I'm saying thus far? Actually, let me get a little bit more here. And I'm seeing her teaching you how to cook. So I have an aunt in spirit that you would have learned how to cook from. No, maybe it's a maybe over, or an I don't know, perhaps. Everything about teaching me how to cook. Everything about teaching me how to cook. Okay. All right, this woman, she. Very popular, had a lot of friends, would have been loved within the family, and also had very much a boisterous personality. Would that make sense for the person you're thinking of, Terry? Um, partly. Partly? Okay. Anyone else connecting if we take all of it? Even the part about cooking? Not an ant, but like an ant. Like an ant, taught you to cook, boisterous, loved by everyone in the family, big personality. Okay, all right, let's get this. I'm feeling drawn to you, but let me get a little bit more here. And it, it, it feels like, and actually I'm feeling a lot of connection between her personality and your personality. Mm -hmm. It feels like, like the two of you are just kids, really. Or at least now you're, you're, you kind of recognize that now you have that kinship, even though you were probably a child at that point. Yes. All right. And would this be like an aunt, perhaps a friend of your of your family, like a friend of the, your mother's? Worked at a restaurant. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Um, I also feel like there's some connection with jewelry with her. Like I feel like it was maybe making jewelry, or I've seen beads in particular. Beads around a necklace. Does that mean anything to you? Like she wore, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So she wore, she had some beads, didn't necessarily make them. Okay. And, but you remember that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And I'm getting the name B, like a B name. Does that make sense? P. A P. Okay. Okay. I can take that. <laughs> One more loop. <laughs> One last loop, I guess. All right. And then I also feel like there was something around bikes. Would you have ridden bikes with her? Would you have gone on a bike ride with her? No. Okay. Carrie, is this, is this connected over here at all? No. Okay. But bikes don't make sense, but you worked at a you told me you work at a restaurant. You um, learned a lot from her, taught you to cook at the restaurant. Yes. Okay. All right. I do feel like I'm with you. We're going to let go of the vice for now. Maybe that might make sense a little bit later, perhaps. Um, I also feel like she would have, at this restaurant that you worked with her, like it would have been a situation where people were really. Um, I almost want to say it was like family life. I kind of feel like people would have been in each other's lives, people would have um, known about each other's lives, done things together, and I feel like you would have been with her on some holidays even. Would that make sense? Yes. And I feel like that was very special to her because I feel like she considered this restaurant to be her family. Yes. And, um, and you, I feel like you appreciated that and you have taken that the, the, the feeling that you had working in that restaurant to other places that you work, trying to create that similar feel. Would that make sense for you? Yes. And and I feel like she's a little bit involved with that from the other side. And I feel like when you go to these different places, when you go to your your classrooms, for example, she's she's enjoying being a part of that and recreating that that feel of that restaurant into the place that you go. And what I feel like she wants to say to you is um, just keep doing you. Like, she loves your energy. She loves the way you impact people's lives. She loves that you just bring happiness and joy and upliftment to, up to everyone. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, wait, all right, you guys, you want more messages? Yeah, yes. I got another medium in the house. Um, I'm so excited for our next medium. I met him, gosh, it's been a couple of years ago. I met him through a class, and he teaches this work as well. And he's, 
you know, it's so positive and encouraging. And even when I had the opportunity to take this class with him, it was in such a space of love, truly. You're going to see that and feel that when he works. So I would love to introduce Ed Torres. <laughs> Thank you, Colby. Appreciate the offer coming in today. Um, awesome. Third one, but we all work differently. It's so beautiful to see these guys, Susie, Zach, and uh, Colby, when you see her work, it's just phenomenal. I'm very visual, so I like to see things, and what they'll do is they'll show me things to say things, and then, then we work it through. Okay? So I'm going to be drawn to this side of the room. I'm not going to Okay. Verifications and messages. So I'm feeling the gentleman here, um, family member, older, um, possibly father, grandfather. Okay, um, interesting. So I'm seeing you, I'm seeing him. So you guys would look alike. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. I'm also seeing a strong person. Okay, again, I'm seeing father son. So a lot of patterns in, in uh, similarity, not only just physical, but your life. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you have a heart condition? Yes. Okay. Strong man, though. I'm saying strong man. A lot of responsibility and care you're going through. Yes. Okay. A lot of love for you. Um, is this your one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy yes. Valentine's Day. What I'm seeing is sort of an energy flow this way. Oh, beautiful. Beautifully, you guys flow together. Um, and a lot of respect for you because I don't know, it's just a beautiful attraction for you guys, and it's just nice to see. Uh, oftentimes, you don't see that. So, a lot of respect for each other, a lot of support for each other. Okay. Um, any kids? Yes. Okay, good. Um, because this is, there's a jump between the kids now. Um, a son? Yes. Yeah. Strapping? Yes. Strong? <laughs> He's going to push you guys. <laughs> it's a good thing because it's sort of like a stair step the way he works. Um, you just present the step and he jumps on it. It's kind of cool to see that. He's going to be fun to watch. Uh, fun. You have another one? A uh, little one? No. Okay. It's coming. I want to come to you again. Um, yeah, can you? Yes. Okay, good. good. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing, um, it's very interesting. I'm seeing. A lot of energy flowing with you, a lot of positive energy. So your work is very beautiful and it's very expansive. You've touched a lot of people. Um, you may not even realize it because as you touch people, that petal, that uh, the, the pond, the, the rock in the pond continues to go out. And so I want to encourage you to keep pushing and to maybe go between different ponds. Okay, you need to keep going that, doing that. So like your, remember you were talking about your so he had four years and he accelerated through his life. He, even though he was in his well 50s, the last four years were in his And so that's what I want to encourage you to do. Just keep pushing and expanding with this with no idea what you're going to do. It's going to be amazing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. May I come to you? Yeah. Oh, okay, good, good. Um, <clears throat> I'm seeing a female here with you. Um, <clears throat> interesting. Family member. Um, Possibly an aunt, very beautiful, very skinny, also uh, very good. nice, nice looking. Maybe she's coming across as she's dressing very nice, and it's important that she uh, dresses important. Also, the way she carries herself is very beautiful. A lot of emotion with this woman. Can you take this? It's okay, yes or no, it's, it's important. Yes, Give me a couple. Give me a couple. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jewelry, fingernails, just nice. She takes care of herself. Um, it's interesting. She's got high heels. Okay. We're going to narrow it down a little more. I'm still missing her. Mother's side aunt. That makes sense. We're going to keep her here. Something going on in the sun here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got it now? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. I want to just send a lot of love to you. I'm feeling like I didn't have enough time. I feel like it went too fast. And I really 
wish I had more time, but she, there was an understanding as things were progressing that things, it was okay, it was okay. And I also feel like the transition, even though it kind of came quickly, she kind of transitioned up to myself, makes sense, okay, good. Again, uh, she's showing me a book, it looks like a Bible. <laughs> yes? Uh, <laughs> it was very important to her as she was transitioning, going into things, as things were happening that she relied on this. Mm -hmm. Part of the message here is you also have the strength and energy inside of you, the spiritualist inside of you. And so when you have issues or concerns, feel free to connect with that strong spirituality. It's amazing. And, and and it's sort of like the, the strong vein that comes up and, I'm sorry, the strong river that comes up and everything's fed into, her energy is feeding into, all these little beautiful energies are feeding into it. So this is what you're feeding into. And this is where you're going to get your strength and energy. And you're grounded, you're well grounded. I used to utilize that to two things. One, of course, is to stay grounded in, in things that are happening, but also to release, release things, let things go. Makes sense? Beautiful. Feel like a sister energy coming through. Does that make sense? Okay, a little taller than you. Um, maybe also one who would have protected you and kicked and, and took you things and took care of you. Oh, yes, yes. Beautiful energy with her. I want to say she. I don't like to say she looked like you or you would have looked like her because you're sisters. But there was a dynamic difference in character, personality. Yes. Yes. Okay. Stronger, more outgoing, when you were kind of more the quieter, subtle person. Love this energy. Love this energy. And you guys were close? Yes. <clears throat> Again, I just want to um, suggest that she hears you, you talk to her, you communicate with her. And it's a beautiful thing. And, and, and she's right here focusing with you, giving you lots of beautiful energy. And I want to suggest guidance. Okay, as, as you are kind of sometimes throwing thoughts out there to to receive, what, what do I do now? She's sort of in a subtle way, just kind of guiding you. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much. Is he not the most amazing? <laughs> to me. He's also given me this 
sense of uh, always like making sure that the family had things to do. Like I feel like it was important for him to keep the family active. So I feel like it would be little trips and things like that, but he'd make sure we're all going on these trips and, and things like that. Make sense? Okay. He just wants to come forward and let you know. Uh, well, gosh, I mean, just incredibly how proud he is of you on following your path and, and that, you know, for the strength that you have and the resiliency that you have shown to uh, kind of continuously be there for people and to shine your light as we were talking about. And it just says he's so proud of you and loves you so much. And I will leave that with you. Okay? <laughs> I want to uh, bring forward a man that makes me feel like this would be a brother or like a brother. Because if, if he's not your blood brother, he would have been like a brother, a really close friend. He's giving me a, a really, uh, the word I have to use, we use raunchy, um, <laughs> raunchy sense of humor. I'm going to be really honest. He's, he's uh, uncomfortable. Like, yeah, I would not want to, like, make him around my family. Like, well, my family would be okay, but around <laughs> most families it would be awkward. So I feel like he's got this uh, foul mouth a little bit, but I also feel like he's got this light. He would just make people feel so good when they were around him. Lots of fun. So can someone take this brother in spirit with this personality or this sense of humor that would be a little off? off. I, I want to I, I was actually going to go over here. So either Ed or the gentleman in front, can you either of you take this friend in spirit or a brother in spirit that would be the sense of humor that could be a little awkward at times? I keep coming to you. Look okay. at me. I'm trying to go to Ed and I'm like, right? You see that? Uh huh. Right? You know who I'm talking about? Yes. Right. Okay. You understand too, he, but you also understand his smile and his kindness. Like, I feel like he's so genuine yes. that we can't help but love him, right? Yes. And he also gives me this feeling too, I wonder if he just like to wear sleeveless shirts or something, because I feel like he keeps wanting to show his his uh, arms or, or his, uh, I wonder if he had a beer belly. Did he have a beer belly, can I ask? Or belly, should I say his bit. belly? Okay, <laughs> because I feel like, you know, he just feels like he would have fun. And I feel like he wouldn't mind having a beer and having a good time. And, kind of chit-chatting with everybody, getting everybody rattled up. Make sense? Yes. Okay. And I do get this suddenness around his passing. Like, we weren't expecting or were surprised uh, the passing. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I do, uh, I want to tell you, though, he feels very close to you. Like, he just wants to let you know. Um, uh, yeah, so you two would have been together even when you were younger because he uh, gives me the feeling of kind of, I, I don't want to say getting in trouble, but doing things that maybe, you know, were a little adventurous together. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. He gives me this feeling of wanting to tell you to keep riding the bike. So keep keep having that adventure. Don't stop, don't stop discovering. Don't stop opening up to what you want and being bold because you've always been able to be bold and you know, he's saying, you know what? Say it loud, say it proud, own who you are because your life also helps so many other people just to do what you're doing. All right, so I'll leave that with you. All right, so just a couple announcements. We have some wonderful things happening here. So the service is every second Sunday of the month. So we encourage you to come in person, because it is fun in person because you can get a message. <laughs> um, and we also, just a couple things, if anyone is interested, and you can do this online too, you don't have to um, be here, but we have these plates. It's gonna be a memorial plate that you can order, and they're gonna go on the chairs in memorandum of a loved one. So it's $37 because that's the cost of it and supports a chair. It actually, um, so if you want to do that, you can send a message on the Facebook where you guys can 
order one here. We have a spirit circle with our lovely Zach Lowe coming up March 10th. It's a Saturday evening. It will be in this space. Anyone who attends is guaranteed a uh, reading, I guess I should say, right? So he's going to go ahead and make sure everyone gets that connection if they come. So the flyers are up at the front on Sunday, March 4th. If you're interested in exploring your intuition, we are going to have a workshop. It's intuition. You get to play. It's going to be fun. Lots of fun exercises and keeping it light and bright. Um, so come and do that. And then we've got that wonderful Reiki talk today. Kelly is actually going to teach a certification course here Sunday, March 25th. So uh, you can get information from her on that. But if you wanted to learn about the Reiki and understand it, she's got this whole book. So it's going to be a fun, long day course giving you A to Z on that Reiki 1, one cert certification. To take a moment and thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for coming and showing and supporting the service and being here with your love and your energy. And I'm going to stop the live stream, but what I would love to do is play you a song. We can't play it on the live stream because they have those things called copyright laws. <laughs> so, but we will. I want to thank you at home. If you can share the polls, let someone else see this beautiful, beautiful work that these light workers are doing would mean a lot. Thank you.